What is up everybody? Coffee Break here with another video right before the second preseason game the Niners have against the Minnesota Vikings who, you know, both of them have been uh, participating in joint practices this week. A lot of good news coming out of the 49ers camp and also a lot of things that need to be worked on. The sense I got from the first practice, which was on Wednesday, was that the Vikings really came out and um, were somewhat giving it to the Niners DBs. Uh, you know, Justin Jefferson, Adam Thielen, those are two really good wide receivers. Niners being down, there was two starters at the time. It really gave players like Diamador Lenore and Ambry Thomas some problems. And I am keeping an eye on those two players specifically. Lenore and Ambry Thomas, those are two year players, you know, this is coming into the second year. And they've struggled a little bit. I think that's kind of been the sense coming out of, you know, the reporters and, you know, people on Twitter is that they're inconsistent. And I think we saw that in the first preseason game against the Packers. And we're seeing that in camp a little bit. Nothing to be really worried about. Um, we are talking about our backups, essentially. But when you have a guy like Samuel Womack, who's a rookie, who's just been thriving, who's just been having a really good camp. I mean, outside of Ayuk, I think that everyone can agree that Samuel Womack has not only had a, a great camp, but he's also had, obviously, some really good, impressive plays in that first preseason game. Really a playmaker in that regard. And we're still waiting on Lenore and Thomas to sort of get into a rhythm. And sometimes it takes players, you know, a, a few months to get into that rhythm and um, that football grind. You know, think of IU last year, right? Slow start, got into, you know, Shanahan's doghouse, came out at the end of that year and was phenomenal for the Niners. And then you fast forward now to this camp, and Ayuk is just a, a totally different pro. Um, really took the bull by the horns, and I like the mentality he's in right now. Did talk a little smack about the Vikings defense, too. I love it, though. You know, you, you're seeing more of his personality come out. And I think that Niner fans, you know, you just have to be patient with these two players right here. Um, rookies last year, coming into the second year, probably, you know, ate a little bit of that hype, but you tend to forget that this is a new year and you have to sort of prove yourself again. That's the main thing. That's what people, you know, especially those young players don't don't really realize there's a draft every year and there's a draft for a reason. Yeah, rookies, Womack is a good example. He's in there now. It seems like everybody is saying he's a starting nickel. That should fuel both Thomas and Lenore. But, you know, that was pretty much first practice, second practice, what we got from, you know, 49ers Twitter, guys who are boots in the ground. I mean, there's some really good follows there. I'm sure, you know, the obvious ones um, being Brad from the SF Niners. I, he was amazing with his videos and kept me updated. I was getting hyped, but Nick Bosa, obviously the monster, no one could block him the second, year, uh, second day, I should say. Uh, there was, so he did have a press conference after the first practice. And, you know, the sense was he was just getting a feel of the opponent, right? Of the tackle. You know, everybody in Vikings Twitter was saying, oh my God, this, our offensive line is, you know, holding their own against Nick Bosa. But he came back the second day and just dominated that, that entire practice. I mean, people were counting six to five sacks, you know, a tackle for loss, just unblockable. And it's safe to say that Bosa is already in, he's already ready to go. I mean, I'd be surprised if I see him in any preseason game at this point. Just put him in bubble wrap and, you know, off to week one. Another thing to note, uh, we didn't kind of really see it with the videos because, you know, we're seeing highlights essentially, but it's been somewhat reported that the offense was kind of up and down, you know, the ebbs and flows of, of camp. But um, the overall, you know, senses is that Trey Lance is trending in the right direction, throwing less interceptions, though. I think he did throw one um, there, but we're, we're still talking about practice here. The thing with Trey Lance is you just want him to go on this steady path here. There's going to be ups and downs, especially to start the year. Uh, this is still kind of a rookie getting involved as a quarterback, right? And so he's going to need to get those cobwebs off. And the only way to do that, um, practice helps, but 
in game play, those reps are going to be super valuable. So, you know, maybe this second preseason game, we see a quarter of Trey Lance instead of just two drives, but, or maybe even a half, who knows? There's only three preseason games this year. Danny Gray, another rookie who's just kind of been killing it, man. There's been like maybe three, three to four rookies that I'm really high on. And, you know, Danny Gray is one of them for sure. I mean, He's just making plays in the game, in camp, you know, in practice. He he's he's just been one of those one of those targets with Lance that you didn't expect come this early. But man, it's like there's always a guy that the quarterback just gravitates to, right? It's just one of those things that you can't really explain. And you know, Jawan Jennings did a good job last year, third down. I can see Danny Gray playing that role this year like he's just unguardable he's going the distance with some of these you know catches he's just that quick he stretches out the field is what i'm trying to say like he, he's really that good and uh, I'm, I'm super excited to see what danny gray does this year like shanahan is gonna find ways to get him involved i'm sure of that also one thing to to make note of is the 49ers offensive line i was hearing again that they kind of struggled in um with the vikings and you know that they, they didn't play really well against the packers either and so it's one of my big challenges for them is how they're going to respond here in the second preseason game you know there are niner fans i'm sure you know maybe it's you maybe it's you that you're worried about this offensive line i totally get it uh the what i saw from justin school what i saw from mcglinchy that right tackle spot was, you know, iffy at best. Uh, I just, you know, there's, there's not much to say. Some of them would just get flat out pushed back right into the pocket. Didn't allow the quarterback to, you know, have any time. Rookie right guard, he is still a rookie, you know, got beat a couple of times. I think PFF had, had him allowing five pressures. I don't know how accurate that is. Um, some of these numbers can be a little wonky and sometimes it could be subjective like 100%. But I think that as long as we're seeing, you know, again, trending in the upward direction from the rookie right guard, I think that we're we're going to be okay. Um, I like what I saw in the run game. I think he's really physical. Um, I like that about him. Uh, the pass protection is where it gets a little sketchy. And uh, one thing uh, I did notice, you know, we did talk about Trey Lance and, you know, him stepping into the pocket on that one play on the first drive. If that's Jimmy Garoppolo. That's a sack. And now we're talking about offensive line being a huge problem. And, you know, Trey Lance with his, you know, mobility is going to make this offensive line seem better than what it is. It doesn't have to be perfect, but um, that's one thing you can rely on. Trey Lance need, will need to extend plays because the way we're playing right now at offensive line, it, it needs to be a lot better. I know Trent Williams wasn't there, but um, McGlinchey, I mean, assuming he's going to be the starter, which I think, you know, I think he is, did not play well. And I know he's getting back from the injury, but again, my challenge to the offensive line is play better. Um, have a cleaner pocket for the quarterbacks. Defensive line. I know. I know. We talked already about Nick Bosa, but defensive line is just something that I am super excited about. Um, obviously, Javon Kinlaw coming back from injury. I think that's going to be a huge help. He's been really solid. I want to talk about Kamiko Ture. I think he's number fifty three. At least that's what he wore against the Packers. I, I really like, I mean, he's coming off the edge. I really like what I see from the kid. Again, another product of the Niners just bringing in players and then making something out of nothing with these guys. And it's all good to see. I mean, who's flying under the radar is, you know, um, Kerry Hyder. You, you forget that he's back with the Niners, but that's because the defensive line group is so deep. I mean, we could throw waves at you. Um, that's that's going to be definitely one of the strengths here with this team, but for sure on the, the defensive side of the football. We kind of already touched on Ambry Thomas and D'Amador Lenore, but I kind of want to challenge them this second preseason game a little bit. I want them to just look more comfortable, look more confident on the field. Maybe, maybe they were just knocking up some cobwebs, but again, these are second year players and I feel like there was maybe a lot of thinking going on in the field. I just 
want them to sort of make some plays, maybe pass breakups, uh, maybe even an interception from one of these guys. That would be super, super dope. That would kind of get them going, get them their confidence, you know, much higher. So uh, I'm assuming that they're both going to be starting um, the second preseason game. But that's my biggest challenge to them. Just make a play. Anyways, guys, let me know in the comment section below who you're going to keep your eye on this preseason game. And as always, we'll see you on the next one. Peace.